What's going on, everybody? Xavier Porter, Brooklyn Fight, Shooter 5, live and direct in the building with the one and only, Mr. Mr. Douglas, Mama's boy. That is Mama's Douglas. Boy. Feeling, bro? AKA the black Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> What's good, though? What's going on? Hey, man, I appreciate you taking the time about your, you, you, you know, your busy schedule and everything. The chop uh, you already know, man. I appreciate it, man. No doubt, no doubt. How you feeling, man? How's everything with you? Everything's surprisingly going really well, man. I know the world is on pause right now, man, but I've been enjoying my time. I'm spending time with my daughter, working out, spending time with the family. It's been good for me. I mean, of course, I can't wait for the world to open back up because I'm ready to fight, all that. But I've definitely been enjoying this time, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's been cool for me. Facts, facts. Now, you're, 27, you're 22 and 7 with 14 KOs, correct? Yeah, I don't even know more. Yeah, okay. Okay. It don't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Sounds um, good. You're a southpaw, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Like big, like a natural southpaw or there's something? You yeah, know? natural. I do. I can't do anything with my right hand. Natural southpaw. Nothing with your right hand? <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> you can't smack somebody with your right hand? <laughs> I, I probably could, but I wouldn't even think to do it. You mean, if I don't got right hand, I'm just, you feel, I wouldn't even think to do it. I'm just smacking my left hand. Okay, I feel you. I feel you. Now, you know, I wanted to chop it up with you because... Because, you, you, you know, you have your IG, you know, and you have your boxing and everything. And I know one thing about you, a lot of people are scared to face you. You know what I'm saying? You, you've put in the work. You've been grinding since day one. So I wanted to chop it up with you, you know, on that basis, as well as, okay, yeah, yeah. you, you know, you, you want to do in your career and everything going forward. I got you. Yeah, I mean, as far as people, like, I, I feel like I have the mentality that people were afraid of me for a really long time. And I, I think I, I put that chip on my shoulder. Like, yeah, everybody see how hard I work. And um, nobody wants to fight me because they're scared of me. But I don't even think it's that anymore, bro. I just feel like it's a business, and it took me a minute to understand the business. You know, like, where I am business-wise, if you're above me, it kind of don't make sense to fight me, which I get, you know, because you know I'm nice. You yeah. know, I could potentially upset you. But the world doesn't know me. So it's like, why would I fight you? you know, like, if I fight you, it's going to be a tough fight. And the, the magnifying glass is going to be on, on mama's boy. Like, everybody's going to want to know who you are and want to know about you. It's going to put you on. It's going to lower my stock. It's not, if I beat you, it's not going to do nothing to my stock. They're going to be like, I'm someone. You're some unknown fighter that I beat. But if I lose to you, it's going to put you on in your story, but it's not going to do nothing, nothing for me. So I feel like people just stay with me to protect their their whatever they got going on and I, I mean it took me a minute to understand that but I, I get it you feel me like I get like it's business so why would I take a chance if I can make bread why would I not just make my money somewhere else so I get it you feel me like but unfortunately where I'm at like I'm gonna still have to keep coming for y'all so <laughs> whether you want to fight me or not I'm on your heels you feel me like I got I have to let me ask you this what what made you want to fight what what put what made you want to step inside the square circle and say you know what <laughs> so i started when i was eight i didn't want to fight my mom forced me to fight i got into a street fight when i was eight against a 10 year old son was huge you feel me like so he, he, he beat me up whatever i ran home so my parents what happened my mother called me soft she was like oh you gotta know how to fight yeah you feel me she called me so you gotta know how to fight. Yeah, yeah, boy you saw boy yeah <laughs> you feel me so she went me to the gym i mean i hated boxing i hated it you feel me like it was not fun to me yeah. um but i'm very competitive so it was a kid that started i, I think i was boxing for like Five months already. There was another kid that had just started. And I was only going on Saturday. This kid started like five months after me. He was going every day. So after like his second month, they made us spar each other. So I'm like seven months in. I'm thinking he's only two months in. So I like, yeah, I'm even though I'm only coming one day, I'm still be able to be truck. That's what I thought. The son beat me up, made me cry, all that. So I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm I'm gonna take it serious just to beat him up. Then I'm gonna stop. Mm. Feel me? So like then I told her I'm gonna go more, I'm gonna go more. So we started going more. So I started training to beat this kid up. And once I beat him up, you feel me? Like, I just liked it. Like, you know what? This is kind of cool. So I, I started competing, but I still didn't want to box, bro. It wasn't up until I watched Roy Jones versus David Telesco. That's the fight that made me be like, yo, I want to do this for real. You feel me? Like, that's when I started. So Roy Jones is the reason I became a professional boxer. Like, I was like, yeah, I want to do this for real, bro. Salute, salute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming given the fact that, you know, you've traveled the whole states and everything, I'm assuming that you've met Roy Jones, probably? 
Yeah, yeah, I met him a couple of times. They're actually cool now, you know what I'm saying? So, so I, I told him about it a little bit, but at the same time, I don't want to seem starstruck. So I was like, <laughs> here's the reason I box. But it definitely was a pleasure meeting him, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like to give people their flowers, let them know that yeah. you have a fan. Like, I'm a, I'm a fan, you feel me? Like, there's not a lot of fighters in the past that I would say I'm a fan of. But, like, Roy Jones is somebody I definitely grew up watching. I'm saying, like, I really love studying Roy Jones and yeah. trying to figure him out. And even though, like, now, now I look at Roy Jones totally different than how I used to, um, it's still, it's still kind of cool to be in the same surrounding of a person that made me do this. I'm saying that got me wanting to do this. Like, I'm, I'm close to one of my idols, uh, kind of. You feel me? Like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Now. The same, thing with, the same thing with Floyd, man. Like, honestly, with Floyd, too, like, Floyd, I consider not a friend. He's not a friend of mine, but we're cool. And it's, like, crazy. Like, I grew up watching this man. You feel me? Like, this man is is lit to me. And now I get to punch him in the face every now and then. Like, that's kind of cool. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. So you spar with Floyd Mayweather? Um, we sparred twice. We sparred twice. How was that sparring? Um, the first time was extremely, uh, like, overwhelming. I think I got, I was nervous. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was just so many people in the ring, banging on the ring, screaming. I feel like... Was this the doghouse type of thing? Like... <laughs> it, it was, it was kind of like on some... I, 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 I mean, I guess it was. Anytime Floyd spar, you low-key think you're in the doghouse. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's the kind of energy he brings. So I think I was just nervous and caught up in the moment. I think Floyd put hands with me the first time. But the second time we sparred... You, you put hands on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? like, I had to show him what time was. Yeah, right. that, that, that He a legend. He an OG. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's... That was just, it was an honor for me to be in the ring. But you, but you had to do what you had to do. But I do like I do. <laughs> but it's my time now. <laughs> Old yeah. man, it's my time. But yeah, Floyd, Floyd the Beast, man. Was this, um, your sparring with Floyd Mayweather, was this, um, for a particular fight or just like, you know? It was for his fight. Are. So the first time, the first time we sparred was when he fought, um, the Mexican kid. Oh, what's his name? Canelo? The one that, no, 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 not Canelo. Um, Guerrero? Guerrero, yeah, I put him for that camp, but Guerrero South, but okay. you know what I'm saying so. So he used me for that camp once, and then he used me for that last um that thing against the, the Asian guy, the exhibition fight that no one thought he took serious. The one, the, yeah, the, yeah. Oh, he took it serious. He now, took I took game. Super serious. <laughs> yeah. So he asked me that to little Asian dude me. was that little Asian dude was official. He was coming. <laughs> I mean, so Floyd, so Floyd sparring for that, but like I said, it was a total different type of energy. Um type of sparring session, everything. I mean, that, and not just because, like, I feel like I'm coming into my prom, and Floyd was like, he's clearly out of his prom, but he's still a man where he can still, you feel me, like, do his thing. So it was kind of cool. Like, I just had to show him I'm not the same fight that you sparred a couple years ago, you feel me? Like, so it was cool, though. How does that work out where you sparred with him years ago, and then, like, your name and your, your ability, your skill set still resonates in his mind to say, you know what, let's bring him back. Well, I think, because Floyd, you know, he always in the gym. Whether or not he's training or not, he's always in the gym watching what's going on in his gym. And he has cameras in the gym, all that. So I, I kind of created a buzz for I've been hearing like about this. those cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you watch it. So, like. Flash Sparks. You know David Flash Sparks. He's been telling me about those. Say it again? David Flash Sparks. He's been telling me about those cameras. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Flash. Flash, shout out to Flat. But, um, yeah, um. He, my name was kind of getting, I created a little buzz for myself because I was sparring everybody in the gym and I do really well when I spar, you know what I'm saying? Like pretty much beat people up. So it was getting back, it was getting around Vegas and around Al Heyman and PVC and everybody that like, I'm oh, boy really in the gym trashing everybody, you feel me? So I know that I got to him. So then, like I said, me and Matt before, we always talk. And fighters can't help themselves but to like, if you hear somebody doing something, you wanna you wanna see for me like so like, yeah. he always be like yo I'm, I wanna spar you again I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you up I'm like Floyd stop it bro like you oh my god you are not playing hands with me like you <laughs> you, you <laughs> like, get out of here bro like you, you the truth but you old bro <laughs> yeah exactly he like he like no nah, no nah, I'm gonna I'm call you I'm gonna call you you gonna put hands I'm gonna put hands you so I be like Floyd you not but alright let's see what happens like, you feel me so like it was three o'clock in the morning son called me like yo we sparring right now so I'm like alright so I'm hyped got up you feel me. Woke mom dukes up, we went over to the gym. So it, it's cool like to see it, it's on a small scale because it's not it's not translated into money, but I yeah. feel like when you're trying to build a legacy, for me, like it's cool to get people like Floyd looking at you, you feel me? Or wanting to see where you at. Like that's yeah. kind of cool to me. So so I enjoyed it. For me, like I have fun with it. That's amazing right there. I feel you on that. Like you got you got the top of the top of the sport that everybody 
exactly to become exactly. or aspire and to that's become. That's who calling my phone. To he calling you at three o'clock in the morning, like yo, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, get yeah. this working. Like you know exactly. what I mean? Like that. That's a great look right there. Exactly. So it felt good, man. It's great for your confidence, and then doing well, him. It's great for my college. I mean, like in front of all his people, like it was cool. It was just me and my mom was in the gym. Everybody else in the gym, low key, is there for him. Yeah, so you feel me? Like that. That's a crazy feeling in itself. But just absorbing that, just living in that moment, is it's cool. You feel me? Like it's crazy right now. That I'm sitting here talking to you about a sparring session, and it feels like I'm talking about a fight. Like you feel me? Like that's that's what's great. That's the kind of energy that he brings. So it was, yeah. it was low. It was lit. Now, thank you for sharing that. I, I truly no, nah, of course, that. yeah. You know what I mean? What went into the decision? Because I'm gonna come back to the the sparring matches with you and Floyd. But what went to the decision of your mother? God bless her. I, I applaud her so much. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm telling you, bro. I applaud your mother so much. <laughs> and, and, and like you know, taking control of your your career, making sure that you know, not only just being a mother. In a parent, but just in a manager, understanding like you know, this is my son, and I care yeah, about him yeah. so much that I'm going to. Nah, it's it's, it's, it's actually it's a surreal it's a surreal thing, man. To feel like I'm making history, I have the potential chance to make history, and all that, and and it feels it feels real. Like there's not no it's not no scheme. You feel me? Like it's really my mom. Really is my training. You feel me? Like a lot of people at first thought it was like a gimmick. You know what I'm saying, but but now nah, it's like actually. I think, and it kind of happened. Like I said, she's the reason I started boxing. But I started boxing with this guy in Brooklyn, um, and he kind of didn't really know what he was doing. You know what I'm saying so. So she removed me from him and brought me to my uncle. My uncle's into boxing as well. My, uncle, my cousin is a pro boxer as well. So um, my uncle started training me, and um, that that time was great. I learned a lot from him. But then I would go home, and she would still show me different things and have me doing different drills in the crib and stuff outside of the gym. Which I mean, like. In my head at the time, I'm thinking this is what all parents are doing. But I still have my trainer, which is my uncle. It's cool. Then we moved from New York to New Jersey. And um, I wasn't able to make it to the gym as much because I was still training in Gleason. We live in New Jersey. It's an hour away. Yeah. So um, some days I wouldn't make it to the gym. So she would just, you feel me, like, start doing pads and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, okay. You feel me, like, again, like I said, spawn well in the crib, all that. And I feel like I'm really learning from her. Then I transferred to a gym in Jersey. And the trainer was a weirdo. You feel me? Like, I just didn't like the shape. Just was a weirdo. So, so I just asked her, like, <laughs> I just asked her, can you just start training me full time? And, like, it, I guess, like, for a while I was afraid of that because it's your mom. So, like, you don't want your mom to be a trainer. But I know, like, I had just went to a tournament, I think, the year before that. And everybody used to call me mom's because she's always in the gym with me anyway, always in my corner on the spot. Always, so, people started calling me mom's way to make fun of me. So I put mama's way on my shorts to like take away the joke. Like, ah, I can't be funny. I'm making fun of myself. Ha. But um, so I put mama's way on my shorts. We hit the regionals and I'm fighting a tough fight. And the crowd starts chanting, chanting mama's boy. And like, it felt so lit. It felt so real. You know what I mean? So I asked her to just train me. For real, she was with it. And just to go from there. So that was like around, I guess it would start like 14, between like 14 and 16 is like that transition where she became my main trainer. And then, it just stuck, you feel me? Like, it just feels good, you feel me? Like, like but, I feel like, I tell people this all the time, too, I have my losses, and people, some people that don't know, don't know us, or don't know me, they're just looking for the losses and be like, yeah, you need to get a real trainer, not train with your mom. I, I'm proud to say, not proud, but it's reality that my losses never happen because of her, you feel me? My losses happen because of me, you feel me? Like, fights I shouldn't take. I shouldn't have taken, or if I, I didn't train the way I, the way I should have trained, or the lifestyle I had outside the gym. That's where my losses come from. I've never been in a ring with someone else better than me, and I never feel like a, a coach out coach my mother. You feel mm. me? I just feel like I wasn't ready. Like when I fought Benavidez, bro, I took a fight in two weeks. I shouldn't have been. That kid is a beast. Like, there's no yeah. reason to fight him within two weeks. So yeah. that's why I have my losses, not because of her or skill or anything like that. So that's why I'm trying to show the world now. Like, I'm going to be a champion. I'm better than all you niggas. You feel like that's how I feel. So, sounds I mean, that's like, how they feel too. Sounds like we got a nice little Netflix movie coming up. Like, oh, it's a fact. <laughs> at, least, at least a YouTube special. You know Some. what I mean? Something like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> get this bread. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what I'm so excited about this, man. Like, I feel like my story, like, it's genuine. Like, it's genuine, but I see, I see movie. You feel me? I do. Like yeah. off, off of my real, like off of real stuff that happened, not somebody having to make something up so it's interesting. Nothing that you could really 
actual my real life and make a movie. You feel me? Like, so I'm excited about that. I just gotta get this belt. Yeah, facts. Now you're gonna continue the campaign at 168 or you gonna drop? Nah, that I'm actually moving, I'm moving down to 160. I'm moving down to 160. So my next fight will be at. I was, I was thinking about that. I was, you know, I was thinking yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have been at 168, bro. But for a little while, I fell out of love for boxing, bro. And then um, and I was just doing it because I'm, I'm good at it. And then um. They offered me a fight when I was asking. Did he offer me a fight for 100K to fight George Groves? And for me, you feel me? I'm like, I'm like 100K, George Groves, eight pounds, eight pounds ain't nothing. You feel me? Like I don't, care. I didn't really care. So like, yeah, I'll yeah. I watched the video. And I didn't think, I didn't think much of him. So I'm like, yeah, I'll fight him again. I was trying to know this fight. I'm like whatever, get to go to Liverpool, get to get the check. So she I wanted to watch for that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I went up for that fight. Then I kind of just stayed up here. You know I'm saying like they just kept offering me fights up here. And I kept taking it, but we already knew I should have been at 160. But like I said, my heart wasn't in it the way it should have been. So I'm just chasing the check. You feel me? Got you. Now, right now, are you sign with anybody per se, or you just you just a yeah? I'm actually I'm actually I have, my manager's name is um Hector Ferco, um who's probably one of the best managers in the game. People he people don't really know about him, especially us because um he really works with a lot of Mexican and Hispanic fighters. I think I might be his only black fighter, but That's I'm, a black, I'm black a black, black Mexican, though. <laughs> you feel me? So, so it works, you feel me? But he's lit. And then I'm signed to Debella as a promoter. Okay, so, okay. So Lou yeah. is your promoter, okay. Yeah, Lou Debella is, Lou. Lou is lit. Yeah, Lou is lit. He, he's dealing with, I feel like him and Al are beefing right now, you feel me, because of the Wilder joint. So, yeah, they've been beefing for a minute. <laughs> yeah, they, I, I, know, I didn't notice. Not just, not, that not just right now. Not just right now. <laughs> I didn't notice when I signed. But oh, like, oh, we are. We, listen, bro. Yeah, they've been beefing for a minute. <laughs> yeah. See, it's so crazy that you notice. Like, like I yeah. didn't even know, bro. I signed the contract, and then I'm like, oh. Like, like the, I'm just hearing, like, you know, hearing things, like, you know, because for what I'm being told, like, on my side, you know where I'm at. So, you know, I'll be told, like, okay, well, matter of fact, we're not even going to dive into all that. Like, you know, uh, yeah, little, little, yeah. we, we know the rest. Yeah. We all know but like the rest. I said, regardless of what, though, he, he he's he looking out for me, you know what I'm saying, trying to get me fights. And he has good relationships with Eddie Hearns and Top yeah. Rank and stuff like that. So, because right now, pretty much, that's what it is. If you're not one of these big promoters, you you kind of out of luck. You feel me? The yeah. little the, the, the little club shows is definitely dead with the pandemic going on right now. Yeah, the club shows are definitely dead. So if you can't get on, they trying to get these big shows back on. If you if you don't have the more that can get you there, you pretty much outside by yourself right now. You so, been you been with Lou for a minute, right? Because I, nah, I, I, we I just saw, got we just got together a couple months ago, like on oh, end of last okay. year. Before that, I, saw, I, was, I uh, saw one of your fights at the Aviator a couple of years ago. Oh yeah, so I had so I was interested. I had a very good relationship with Debella when I first turned pro. Okay, and um, I was gonna sign him. Come, yeah. they, he he gave me a contract. Starbucks gave me a contract. I was signing him. I ended up signing with a manager, um, by the name of Keith Connolly, who's also at Danny Jacobs and War Rosinski at the time. Sure now I think he has um, a couple of other fighters. Yeah. yeah, so I signed with him, and he got me to Al. So gotcha. that's why I left. Um. Debella and but it was always love between the me and Debella, main me and main events, me and Starbucks and mm-hmm. like I created like a good relationship with everybody. So that was cool. I could go back, you feel me? Yeah. So Debella looked up. Okay. So with this COVID, this pandemic, epidemic and everything, what are you doing right now to, you know, maintain yourself to prepare and be ready for everybody's gonna feel these hands when you step inside the <laughs> Bro, I'm <laughs> I see when I was with you, I'm probably training, if not as hard, I would say harder than I was training when you because because there's nothing else to do. You feel me? So like I get up in the day in the daytime, I have my daughter, I'm chilling, you feel me? That I'll go run, come back, shadow box, which I think people sleep on how effective shadow boxing is. Shadow boxing is probably one of the best things ever. So I shadow box every day. I do my strength and conditioning in the crib. Um then every now and then we'll get together, I'll get together with another fighter, we'll go to an empty gym and spar. I'm saying like so. I've been I've been training hard, man. It's actually been a great. I feel great. I'm saying so. When the world opens back up, I, I could fight. If it opens up on Monday, I could fight Tuesday. Mm. Something like so that that feels good. Um, and that's been it, man. Like I said, the pandemic's been great for me because I've been able to focus on this. I also am a personal trainer, so I do a lot of sessions in the gym. So okay. and I feel like it's cool because I'm always in the gym. But doing it right now, I'm always home. Like I I just have a lot of time for myself. So. Gotcha. It's been it's been working out great. So I'm I'm in shape. I'm ready to fight right now. I just sparred on ten rounds. 
10 rounds on was a two, on, on Tuesday. 10 rounds, two different undefeated fighters, five and five. And um, I felt great. Like, that was probably one of the best 10 round sessions I've had. And I have no fight coming up. You feel me? Like, that's kind of cool to me. So I'm excited about it. With your time working with Floyd, was it, is there any reason why, or was there a reason, or was there a situation where you might have been given an opportunity to, like, you know, maybe sign with TMT, sign with Mayweather Promotions? Yeah, um, I actually, I actually moved out here to sign with the Mayweather with Mayweather Promotions. But a lot of people don't notice. I was on this reality show called Knockout that didn't get really, it didn't really get any play. But mm -hmm. Floyd Senior was one of the coaches on the on the show, and he was my coach, and then me and him won the show. So on the finals. I fought in front of Floyd. It was the finals in Miami, and Floyd. Was it like a contender Miami. series type of thing, or? It was like a, a bullshit contender. Yeah, it, it was trash. It was a terrible, Probably. terrible, terrible show. Mm -hmm. But but it opened a lot of doors for me in the sense that I was able to fight the finals in front of Floyd Jr. So I won the finals. Me and Floyd built a rapport. Jillian Love was there and all that. And like I built a rapport with them, and it was just like, oh yeah. Floyd was like, come come to Vegas. Like I got you. Like, is there footage of that or like you know like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, I get, I think you can Google Dennis Douglas Knockout TV and it's on YouTube. I think the little clips on YouTube. I'm not sure. And then I know they did like a couple of other seasons, and other seasons were on Hulu. But I'm pretty sure you, you can find it. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, you can find it. But yeah, so I won that show. It was interesting too because my York was on it. Um, my York. Oh, my York. My York was on the show. And oh, oh, the dude that I beat, one of the dudes that I beat to make it to the finals is somebody that beat me in the actual fight, in a real fight. His name is like Angel something. And he was another person. He was a person that, that beat me because I took the fight short notice, didn't care, didn't train that hard. I was going through some health issues. Mm -hmm. But I took the fight. And um, because I, I just love boxing. I just love fighting. I love challenging myself. So I took the fight. And he won. But he trashed me. No disrespect. But he trashed me. So, um. <laughs> so they call me about the TV show. I'm like, nah, I don't even want to do a TV show. And then they're telling me about the people that's going to be on it. They're like, this kid Angel's going to be on it. So I'm like, Angel Rodriguez, the kid that I... And I was like, yeah. And I was like, well, I get a chance to fight him again? They're like, yeah. So I'm like, all right. So I signed up for the show. Yeah, yeah so I can fight him again. You know I mean? so, so I spanked him on the show. like Because it's funny. It's so funny. Like He had the kind of energy. He's like, yeah, like he did his best, but I'm still better. And I'm like... <laughs> Bro, you haven't seen nothing near my best. Trust me. So when we got to fight in the show, like I beat the hell out of him. Mm. And I think like I feel like maybe the senior became like a, a fan of mine. Maybe the senior even did on the show. He said like this kid is way better than I thought. Like this kid is good. This kid is real good. So senior was high of me. He told Junior about me. Junior liked me. So then, yeah, he's the reason I came out here to move to um sign with with promotions. But um, once I got here. My manager, Al Heyman, was managing my advisor at the time. He was like, for what? Like, if you're me with motion cards, pull under me, and you're already under me, why sign? Like, I got you. You know, like, you don't have to sign. So I was mad at that. I'm like, no. So, so the separation me. was, you, like you just mentioned, like you said, you, you you went out to Vegas to basically work with me with the promotions, but you was already yeah. connected with Al Heyman. And I was with Al, I was with Al, yeah. So, so I, was, I was like, so, why so go was over here when I got you covered over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sylvia, Sylvia was one of Al's right hands. Sylvia she Brown. Was like, she was like, yeah, Sylvia Brown. She was like, um, she was like, no, don't sign for what? Like, we got you. Like, you're under us. It's the same thing. Like, you're good. So I was upset about that. Let me tell you something, bro. You're the, fir you're the first fighter that I've ever heard to say that this is, this is, this is a, Made with the promotions in this PBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of fighters that I talk to, a lot of things that we all see in media, this, that, and the third, no one discusses or no one ever shares. And I appreciate you for being honest yeah. with what you're saying. This this made with the promotions and then it's PBC. Yeah, whether Al whether Al whether and Floyd or Lenny and everybody else is at the top working together, yeah. still there's still, still a separation. Yeah, still a separation. yeah, you're right. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know. That. You're right. Yeah. It's not talking about. But yeah, there's a you. You could be without and not be a PVC. I mean, yeah. with Mayweather, you could be a Mayweather and not be without. Yeah. You know what I'm so it's a, it's a complete separation. But then there's fighters that have both. Like Julian is under Mayweather and Al. I think Badu Jack is too under both. You feel me? Like, yeah. You, you, you it, these fighters that are just stuck between. Yeah. Yeah, but then there's fighters that are just with Mayweather. And then yeah. there's fighters that sign out that are that have nothing to do with Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it goes both ways. But yeah, so he was like to me, he was like, they were like, just don't don't sign with play. Like, nah, just stay 
with us. So I'm like, okay. So I was I was upset at first because you know I wanted to be part of the money team. I wanted to wear the whole money team outfit. Like, cool. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be cool. Yeah, you know, I want I want to be fly like. <laughs> you know I mean? But and then I, but but in hindsight, I'm actually happy they did that, and I'm happy that I was able to to get to know Floyd mm -hmm. as a boxer and somebody I look up to as a fighter. And just as kind of like an associate, as opposed to my boss, you know what I mean? I feel like we'd have a different relationship if he was my boss, you know what I mean? Like, so I like I like how we are right now. Like, we talk, we go to the yeah. club, you feel me? Like, it's, it's like that. I, I learn a lot from him, but I don't need him for anything. As opposed to there's a lot of fighters that are out here right now that need Floyd. Yeah. And he has a lot going on. If he can't help you out the way you need, you stuck. You feel me? You end up resenting him. Because he can't look up you like the way you want him to because he got he has his life and everything else going yeah, he on. Got, you know? He got a million things in the world he got to deal with. Exactly. You know I mean? So I feel like people people sometimes look at that negatively, but you can't. Like that's a grown man doing a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So so I'm I'm blessed with the opportunity to like get to know him and be cool with him, but to not work under him, you know what I mean, and still have yeah. my own lane. So it's been cool. Yeah. Now I wanted to I definitely wanted to chop it up with you about some of the fights you had, because okay. you, you fought my guy, Steve Hitman Martinez. <laughs> oh, Steve, that's my guy. That's my guy, man. Shout out to Steven, man. <laughs> you don't know me. Me and Steven, we, we, I've known Steven probably since I was like 12. Yeah. Damn, like, like, we grew up in the amateurs together. He actually yeah. fought my cousin. How many times? They fought, oh, they fought They fought. twice. They went one and one. I'm saying, like, so Um, I, I knew, I know Steven very well. So when I got the call to fight him, I kind of said yes because I thought he was going to say no. Like, you remember, like, yeah. so I was trying to keep it was my one of those I, was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm going to say yeah. Because I, I kind of didn't want to fight him. I would, but you know, I kind of didn't want to fight him. But I'm like, I'm not going to say no to anybody. So I said yes, <laughs> and he would say no. <laughs> <laughs> then, then he said I ain't going yes. to put it out there, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> then he said yes. I'm like, oh, okay, we're, we're fighting. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a very, very interesting fight. Um. But like I said, it's no love lost. Like I still for me like love Steven, for me like co fighter. But the fight was super close too. Fight was super close, super good. But I mean like Yeah, y'all two was going at it, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I still say it too, Steven, that's probably the hardest I've been hit to the body in a fight. Like he hit me in the stomach in the fight. And after like three days later, people would be like, Yo, good fight. And I'm like, uh and my chest still <laughs> my chest still hurt. Yo, Steven could punch, man. So so shout out to him. That was a good fight. Now, Charlo. Charlo. <laughs> Talk to me, bro. <laughs> All right, so there's a story behind that, too. So with the Charlo fight. Are we talking about um, Jamel? Yeah, Jamel. I don't even know what you're talking about. One of the brothers. I feel one of them. Yeah, so, so I, with that was... I was I had just got called to be in camp with Delvin Rodriguez. Mm. So I was going to camp with Delvin Rodriguez. And um, I was up there. Niggas call me like, yo, you wanna fight? Would you fight Charlos? At the time, I didn't really know. I didn't really know much about them. I this was early. This is early on. Yeah. Yeah, this is early. So I just knew they were twins, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll fight them. That's cool, whatever. And then um, Charlo hits me up on on Twitter, like, hey, yo, follow me, bro. So I follow him. Then he he hits me in DM like, yo, um, call me. I want to talk to you. Send me his number. So he wanted fight, to like, fight you though. Yeah, the one I want to run, exactly. So, <laughs> energy right now, that's that's energy I From New York, we, we think different. So I'm like, yeah, we don't, we okay. don't move like that. We, we don't do that. <laughs> so I'm like, in my head, now you soft. But I'm going to call you and figure it out. You feel me? So yeah. I'm And he was, real, he was real humble. He was like, he was like, listen, bro, like, I feel like your story is dope. You got your mom training you. You're lit. He's like, my story is dope. I got my twin, me and my twin. We're going to be champions. So he's like, our fight is going to be worth millions. He was like, let's not fight right now. Let's okay. wait to fight later where we're both lit and everything worth me. But all in my head, though, in my head, while it's happening, I'm like, this nigga is soft. You know, like, that's how I'm seeing it. I'm saying, he's scared of me. You know I mean? He was super humble what he was saying. That's, that, he said, that's like, that NYC shit with us. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? He was thinking like, smart. He was thinking boxing. Yeah. He's like, bro, I'm a twin. Yeah. You're a mama's boy. We gonna be lit. Let's we can do this at another level at another time, and we can really yeah. get this spread and make millions. Yeah. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, nigga, you scared? I'm about to beat you up. I'm fighting you now. You feel me? So like, so I hung up on someone. I'm like, like, my this nigga scared to death. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> 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 so, 
Yeah, so then I didn't hear nothing back about the fight. I kind of stayed in camp with Delvin for that week. Delvin, that camp was terrible. Got, got like, low key got kicked out that camp, I think, because mm. they wanted me to take it easy and I wasn't doing that. So yeah. I got kicked out the camp. Go back home. I kind of wasn't really training like that because I didn't think nothing was going to happen to fight. Then they call me back, like, I'm Sylvia calling me back, like, yeah, the fight's going to happen in like two weeks. Are you ready? I'm like, oh. And this is still okay. PBC. This is still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still PBC. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I'll be ready. So I did. I didn't. I mean, you feel me? I didn't train like I should have trained. Yeah. And I, and I um, I took the fight. Got in the ring with um, with Charlo. And the first round, he called me to shout like, oh, he can punch like really for me because I usually first round like people hit me. I'm like, hey, it's nothing. I that yeah. helped help me figure out how I'm gonna beat you. I'm like, oh, he can, he can punch. Okay, I can't get the end of his punches. So I'm trying to box him, but he's getting better than me. I think it was round three. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just go get this nigga. Like, I just got to bully him because trying to outbox him isn't working. So I tried to bully him. I stepped to him. I feel like I got the better of the round, of round three now. So I'm like, okay, I'm kind of feeling my box. Round four, I kind of feel like it's kind of the same. It's an even round, but I, I kind of would give it to him. You feel me? It was an even round, but I'll give it to him. Round five, I think it was round five. I'm starting on the same way, just coming at him. He pulls back a little bit, and I step down. He runs me into her right hand, mm. hardest I ever been hit in my life. Like mm. I drop on the floor, I look up, and like I'm not really sure where I am. <laughs> so, so, so I'm not really sure. Where I am. <laughs> being honest, you being honest, like so. So I get up, whatever. Um, I stand up. I'm like shaking you up, but I'm up. The referee's like, nah, the fight's over. I'm like, what? Like, you bugging. So I'm, I'm tweaking. Like, man, they stopping the fight. Like, I'm fine. I'm good. Like, what's wrong with this nigga? My mother looking at me. She's like, she's like, look, look at look at the replay. I'm like, what do you mean look at the replay? I'm good. 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 I'm looking at the replay. I look at this. She told me, look, oh, yeah, Staples Center. So I look up. They got the replay. Your mom's like, yo, look up, nigga. And I see myself getting up. And how about yeah. I look? I'm like, oh, wow. Good stop. Good stop, bro. <laughs> you feel me? So that's what happened, Charlie. So, like, again, I would love that fight again with um, with, um, with eight weeks to prepare myself yeah. and give myself a real chance because he is a good fighter. You feel me? Like yeah. I feel like there's been blueprints on how to be effective with him. I feel like they've shown that, and I feel like I know how to be effective with him as well. I feel like I know what he's really good at and what he might have issues with. So I would love mm-hmm. to fight him again. But he, but he is legit. I mean, like I have but respect for him. I didn't even like him as a person after that for a while too. Yeah, but. This is me speaking just as far as a spectator and a fan of the sport. Yeah. I think he's one of the one of the better fighters. You remember that he can fight. So I would definitely love to run it back, but um it's a fight that I have to be super locked in for because yeah, he's good. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Groves, you mentioned Benavidez. Um, I gotta holler at you about this, you know, the Anthony Durrell situation. <laughs> Cause, 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 real talk, cause I was watching that and I said, Yeah, he ran up on him at the <laughs> That's the elevator, like, yo, 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 let's do it again, bro, yo, yo, yo. You know what's funny about that? If it, it's funny about that. It's like, anybody anybody you talk to about me, they'll tell you, bro, like, I'm one of the most, I'm one of the most respectful dudes. You know, like, I'm just, I'm honest. So if I think you're whack, I'll be like, oh, you're whack. Mm-hmm. But, like, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very honest with people. That's why I feel like I get so much respect in boxing, because people know that I'm not going to suck nobody off. You feel me? Like, I'm going to speak how it is. You feel me? Like, if, whatever. So... With Anthony, I never held my tongue about the fight. I thought I beat you. you know, like, I yeah. feel like you, you you punked out. I feel like you – and I still said it. Me and actually squash pull the beef now. Like, it's no beef. That's good. That's good. But I still want to fight him. And I still feel the same <laughs> – you feel me? And I still feel the same way, which is I won the first fight. Like, they did, they did me dirty because I was in your hometown. And you faked the injury that wasn't there and went to score cards and you won because mm-hmm. – you were scared. That's that's how I look at it. So that's how that's the energy I had all leading up to that. Leading up to that. Now I'm going. To, I was in camp with Sean for that whole fight because it was you know that was Sean Earl's fight. So I'm going with Sean's like my brother. So Sean like gives me the flight to come with him, and stay with him the whole fight. Whatever. I got my, I got my little Sean put a sweatsuit on. Whatever. I'm chilling. I see Anthony Durrell in the airport. This is from Vegas to Cali. I see him in the airport. So. It's already known now. I've been talking greasy about you. I've been saying, yo, you, you scared to fight me. You saw Did y'all take the same flight or y'all just saw each other? We on the same flight. We wow. on the same flight. So I, it's, it's like, already been that. Crazy. It's been the kind of energy. <laughs> like you ducking me, whatever. He's already blocked me on Instagram, all that. You feel me? Like, Did you have birds of the flight or y'all just was like seated somewhere? Nah, I saw him. I said, what up? Shook his hand and kept it moving. Because I'm like, 
I'm like, yo, this is bigger than right now. He getting ready to fight Benavidez. Benavidez yeah. is, a, is, a, is a good, it's a big fight. Yeah. So I'm not going to ruin your fight. You feel me? Like, it's not about me. Like, I'll talk about me and you or me and David or anything after y'all fight. Like, you feel me? That, that's just like the unwritten code of boxing. Like, niggas just know. Like, if somebody got a fight coming up that you don't violate about yourself. Like, that's just, we just all know that. So, I didn't do that. You feel me? What up? Kept moving. Sat down on the flight. What up? There was not, nothing spoken. I see him in the airport a couple of times. I mean, I see him at the hotel a couple of times. There's no words, nothing. People keep asking me about the fight. When I do reports, though, I'm gonna be my, I get my honest opinion, which is, I think David Benavides is gonna stop him. I think Anthony Durrell is soft. I think he's gonna stop him. That's my opinion. But I'm not bringing that energy to him. I'm not saying nothing to him. When I still see him, I'll show him respect, whatever. So the press conference comes and I'm standing in the front row because the first time press conference and Anthony Durrell and Benavidez goes to me. Benavidez is cool now, even though like I want to fight him too, but that's my guy. So um, he saw me at he saw me before the, the press conference. He gets on stage and he goes, "You didn't even beat Dennis Douglas." And like I'm standing right oh, there. Oh, like, oh, you name about there? I got you. Yeah, he's, doing, he's like, "You didn't even fight Dennis. You didn't even beat Dennis Douglas. Dennis Douglas was about was beating you." And then Durrell goes, "Please, I was about to knock Dennis Douglas out." So I'm standing right there, and like niggas low key looking at me. <laughs> they low key looking me in my face. He's like, "I'm about to knock Dennis Douglas out." So I'm like, "No, you wasn't." But mm. I still didn't violate, didn't interrupt the press conference, and then saying that I just sat there because it's, again, it's not about me. So later on, now I'm doing an interview with Ellie. I sat back and um and Ellie tell, I told the fight and Darrell is kind of buying me but I don't care I'm doing I'm doing my I'm doing my interview so I'm like Darrell gonna get stopped he saw he gonna quit I guess I'm talking so I guess Darrell hears me he like walks past me he's like yo you a bitch and he like just like walks off mad fast so me and Ellie laughing about it I'm like this nigga's corny you feel me like I saw we do kept going kept talking he circles back around I guess he he liked how he felt doing that so he circled back around like you pussy. And he walks off again, mad fast. So I'm like, all right, you're not going to just keep calling me names and walking away. Like, we, you feel me? So that's when I got up and I walked over to him. That's what the camera sees. So the camera sees, like, it looks like I'm coming up to him with animosity about our fight. But I'm coming up to him asking him, you can even hear me say it in the video. I'm like, yo, you talking, you saying all this stuff while you pass me. I'm here right now. Like, what do you have to say? Like, what's good? Like, say it to me mm -hmm. in my face. So he looks around. He nervous, but then he sees too many people. Now I gotta be the dog. I'm Anthony Durrell, the dog. I gotta show that. So he starts all this yelling and hand move, picture movement and all that. So I'm like, bro, like, I hear you, but you're not gonna swing. Now you have a fight coming up. I know that. I'm not gonna swing because I'm not gonna ruin your fight. So right now we just talking. So you bring all this attention to it for no reason. It's corny because we're not gonna fight right now. You know, like, I'm mm -hmm. not gonna punch you. You're not gonna punch me. It's deeper than us. So yeah. why you bring all this attention? Like, let's just talk. That's before me. Like, so I'm like, nah, unk smack him, unk smack him. Like, you, you look wild, soft now. You look crazy to me right now. Like, your uncle is not gonna slap me. You know, although I've seen he, your uncle is the hitter because he is the one that swung on him. So he, then again, he might smack me. You feel me? But like, <laughs> what you feel me? Like, but well, he's not, proud. <laughs> that, that joint that joint was corny so yeah. again it came out making it look like oh wow would Dennis press him for his fight that's whack but that wasn't what that really wasn't what it was like I was giving him his lane to to fight but you're not gonna disrespect me like I don't care what's going on you're not gonna keep disrespecting me so that was that we had another altercation after that but then um, then we spoke I actually went up to him like I saw him at MGM for the Wilder fight and I went up to him and I'm like yo listen bro like I still feel the same way about our first fight I still want to fight you, but I don't want to. I don't want to be walking around like watching my back at fights because you behind me. Or you feel me like that's corny. You feel me like we're we're professionals. You feel me like, and I hate this might sound crazy to people, but I hate beefing with black people. You feel me like we got so much against ourselves already. Yeah. Why beef with each other? Like that's corny. Like yes, I want to fight you when we're both getting paid for it, but for us to to be beefing right now in the street is corny to me. So let's dead that. He was on the same type of sound. So I was like, all right, bet. So we shook on it, and um, it's been cool. I've seen him since then. I mean, say what up again? Like, it's no, it's no like love. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with him, but I don't have problems with him. You feel me? Like, it's no, it's no beef. So that's that with him. Okay. Last but not least, we gotta talk about your mother, the beautiful woman. Cause she was just, she was just down. I don't know where she went. She was just eavesdropping. <laughs> but God, <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta talk about the greatness that she represents and has, you know, brought to your life and everything that she continues to, you know, bring forward for you and everything. 
for the family, you know, everything. I, like, so I, like I told you earlier, I applaud her all day, every day. Yeah, man. And it's so crazy. It's, so, it's funny because people applaud her and, and love her for what they see, and they don't even see half of it, bro. Like, yeah. the type of lady that this lady is, is is kind of amazing, bro. Like, to have this person be my mom. Like, I grew up in Brooklyn, bro. We lived, we lived in – I lived in Brownsville. We had a, we had a two-bedroom joint in Brownsville. Like, it was the hood, you feel me? But in that spot, my cousin had just came home from jail. He had no place to stay, so we were his halfway house. She brought him in to live with us. Then he moved out. She had some South African friend that didn't that couldn't get their papers. They moved in with us. Then my cousin lived with us for a little bit. And then my my little brother's best friend lived. Like she just takes everybody in. Like she just loves everybody. I'm like she a good person, bro. Like it's it's so rare to meet a person like the person that she is. Like the loving generous always giving kind of person she is so to have that kind of energy and the knowledge that she has for the sport in my corner it feels amazing even when i go in between rounds when i go back like it's it's like i'm going home bro it's like i'm fighting for three minutes the bell rings and i, I get to go home the young niggas is in the corner with child trainers and they just about to keep your hand up the line and she might be saying that whatever but i'm at home right now you know I mean? like i'm comfortable because like it's genuine love in the corner you feel know I me mean? like so we i'll be in the corner we be joking you feel know I me mean? like it it's cool man and like i said like she has great box knowledge people always talk about maybe she doesn't have all the knowledge and maybe she doesn't you feel know I me mean? but i feel like she knows that and i know that so we're willing to learn together. And I feel like that's dope. And I feel like, cause I feel like there's a lot of male trainers that don't have all the knowledge, but they swear they do for me. So like, they can't learn no more. Like she knows that she doesn't know it all. So like throughout my, throughout my entire, not even professional career, throughout my boxing career, man, I worked with like my uncle, worked with, I worked with Benavidez and I worked with Mayweather Senior. I worked with Eddie Mustafa. I mean, like, she was always my my main trainer. But the fact that she'd bring people in to help me out, to help me get better, it was never about her. It was always about making me better. People don't get that. Like, the bond we have is different. Like, my mom would be in my corner. As long as I'm fighting and my mother is here, she will be here, she will be in my corner. Whether or not it's somebody else in there, and if me, she'll be there. Because, like, that that type of dedication to your fighter, not even son, to your fighter or to a person is rare. And she has that, you know. So that's what we don't get. Like, yeah, I love the oh, she wear heels when she do a pass. Like, that's lit. You feel me? I love that she's a female. That's lit. But I do it because of how I feel in the corner, which is or how I feel when we're training, which is hella love, hella like this is where I'm supposed to be. It just feels right. You feel me? Like she's dope. I get caught up in talking to about. I talk about that. I sound crazy. No, no, no. You you flowing, bro. You flowing. <laughs> You flowing with it, like you know, you you like a hip hop yeah. artist, and you got the beat, you just flow it. Yeah, yeah, you feel me? Just start talking, just start talking. You know? Like like Jay Z, like Jay Z and Freeway, just keep going. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's really what it is, bro. So like, yeah, like I'm in a real amazing position, man. Like, well, my mom is my 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 coach. Then my my parents still together. A lot of people always wonder, like, oh, he he must supposed to be a single mom. Nah, my dad is. My parents are still married. My dad is still in my life. My dad is super late. He just don't box, you know what I mean? But he be at the at all the fights. He he comes to my sparring. He tries to give me advice. His advice is terrible, but it's funny. You feel me? Like friends together. And um, we just everything is just lit, man. I'm in a really good, positive place. So I can't wait to show the world me. You feel me? Like I'm about to show the world me. Like I'm gonna we're gonna be faces of boxing, bro. And I feel like our story is gonna be so much better because it's not the perfection story. Floyd had the perfection story. How long can you keep perfect going? 50, you know, 50, one, you know, whatever. He kept he kept perfect going. Errol Spence is on that path. You feel me? Like, one of the Charles is on that path. What a perfection path. But that path has been done. So when they compare you, when they talk about you, they're going to talk about you to Floyd. Is he better than Floyd? Is, you feel me? Like, I feel like I'm in my own lane because, like, I have the losses. But... I'm still not people like all of us are people still don't consider me a B side fighter. I'm still the A side. You know, like I'm still like like people still see championship in me. Like I'm not written off yet. You feel me? Like so I feel like my story is unique. I feel like there's only one fighter that's kind of than this, which is Glenn Johnson, who's a fighter that was a heavyweight World who had losses, but still became a champion, still became you feel me? And, but even him, he never became like a household name because he's a black fighter and you know, as black fighters, it's hard for us unless we're ignorant. It's hard for, for niggas to watch us. So he never became big. But I'm going to be big with the seven losses, 
I'm going to be the man. You feel me? And my story is going to be different, Floyd. They're not going to compare me to Floyd because I'm not 50 and old. You feel me? Like, they're not, they have nobody comparing. I'm going to be the first me to do it. You feel me? And that's exciting. Okay. Mr. Douglas. Yes, sir. Got a stretch yes, on that, bro. You said what? <laughs> I got a stretch on that. Yeah, you feel me? Like, I see everybody gonna know it's Dennis Douglas, aka Mama's Boy, aka the Black Mexican, aka Mr. One of Those Days, aka, <laughs> <laughs> AKA Scorpion, aka Aquaman. That's it, man. All right. Yeah, Aquaman's new name. Oh, that's that's what's happening right now. When you, you watch any of my fights coming forward or watch my sparring now, like I call myself Aquaman because, bro, the way I'm in shape. Like, I don't care what you're doing, bro. I'm going to take you in these deep waters. I'm going to drown you. Like, it don't matter. I'm going to drown you. You feel me? Like, I spar now. Like, I got dudes that's nice. First two rounds, we going at it. Like, three yeah. rounds, we going at it. But round four, round five, round six, if it starts going deeper, you're going to fade. I'm going to drown you, bro. Like, you feel me? Like, because that's how I'm feeling right now. So, that's what's up. Yeah. It's feeling good, man. All right. Drop your IG one more time. Yeah, follow me at Mama's Boy underscore Dennis. So Mama's Boy M O M M A S Boy A -A underscore Dennis. Say it again. You got a Twitter? Yeah, it's the Mama's Boy. So D A M O. I probably should make them all the same, but it's the Mama's Boy. So D A like the you know Black Boots well the we we little yeah. off. <laughs> D A and M O M M A S B O I. All right, so cool. Follow me either. Join. Keep up with like. All right, let's go. Let's get ready. Like, it's about to be a takeover, man, for real, for real. As soon as box, as soon as they let me out this cage, whoever they put me in the ring with, bro, it's over. All right. Well, I appreciate you, bro. I really do. I really ready, no, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. And I got you locked in with the math and everything. We're going to link up soon enough, all right? That's what it is. All right, peace. All right.